Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today we will talk about linear equations again, uh, but not in a theoretical but more practical um, standpoint. Um, I have a couple of problems which I would like to share with you, and uh, obviously you, you are encouraged to do them just by yourself first. Uh, they are on the web and uh, this is basically an explanation of what these problems are all about. Alright, so I, I have four different problems and uh, I'll just do one by one. Let's start with the first one. We have an equation 5.5x plus 11 equal to 0. Okay. Why did I decide to, uh, to present this particular equation? Well, here is a, a, a small condition which I would like uh, to impose in the beginning. I would like to solve this equation not in just any real number, but in integer numbers. Again, specification of domain is always very important. If I specify a domain um, for instance, of uh, positive numbers, uh, obviously this particular uh, equation doesn't have any solutions because if you will apply the regular <coughs> uh, transformation minus 11 first, so you will get 5.5x equals minus 11 and then divide by 5.5, that would give you x. 11 divided by 5.5, which is equals to 2. So, we do have an equation uh, which uh, has a solution x equals 2. So, if my condition in the very beginning is I would like to solve this equation um, in the domain of integer numbers, well, I'm sorry, that's minus 11. Um, then this particular um, solution is a real solution because minus 2 is an integer number. If, however, my condition in the very beginning is uh, I would like to solve this equation in the domain of positive numbers or positive integer numbers or something like this, this is not uh, a, a, an element of that domain, which means equation would be just not solvable. The equation would not have any solutions. So that was basically the purpose of um, this particular exercise, to emphasize that there is always a condition, what's the domain where you are looking for the solution of this particular equation. And if domain does not contain your solution which you have obtained, well, it means it's, there is no solution, basically. That's what it is. Okay, so that's as much as we have for the problem number one. I would rather say sub-problem number one. Now, the next one is another illustration of the importance of the domain. I have decided that um, I will solve equation among the complex numbers. So, here is my example. 3 plus 4i x plus 4 minus 3i equals to 0. Okay, so if you remember, complex numbers are always um, comprised from a real part and the imaginary part, and the imaginary part contains this uh, number i, which is a square root of minus 1, introduced purely um, Theoretically, there is no real number which can correspond to the uh, square root of minus 1, but it's very convenient. Uh, mathematical theory and the complex numbers are very, very interesting set. Uh, we will definitely be um, uh, involved more with complex numbers than we will go to equations of higher order. In any case, uh, complex numbers, as you know, can be added, subtracted, multiplied, divided by each other, and I'm in, in my in my rights asking to solve this particular equation in the domain of complex numbers. Now, how to do it? Well, exactly the same thing as before. The first, uh, we will apply uh, invariant transformation by subtracting 
a complex number 4 minus 3i from both sides. That gives me 3 plus 4i x equals minus 4 plus 3i. I reverse the signs here because it goes to the right. Um, and obviously the next is I divide both uh, sides of the equation by a non-zero, which makes it a variant transformation, by non-zero number 3 plus 4i. And I can say x is equal to uh, minus 4 plus 3i divided by 3 plus 4i. Is this a solution? Well, in a way it is. However, uh, it's not a, 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 a common way of representing uh, complex numbers. Complex numbers are uh, usually represented by a combination of real part, so this is supposed to be a real number, and imaginary part, which is a product of real times i, and plus or minus in between. So all these numbers are represented in their traditional form. This is not a traditional form. Um, now, how can we convert this into a more traditional form when I have a real number, and then plus or, num plus or minus, and then another real number times i? Well, first of all, this is a good opportunity to press the pause button and try to do it yourself. Um, that's my pause. <laughs> um, okay, and now I will basically tell how it, it can be done very easily. Um, you know that if you have a, a ratio of two numbers, you can always multiply numerator and denominator by the same number, and uh, you will get the same result, obviously. So if I will multiply, let's say, by two, both numerator and denominator, it's exactly the same uh, fraction. So now I have to multiply it by something which will get rid of the, um, uh, of the imaginary number in the denominator. And uh, uh, the standard approach is the following. If you have a complex number a plus bi, and you multiply it by a minus bi, let's see what happens in this case. It's very simple. a times a is a squared bi times a, it's a b i. Now, a times minus b i is minus a b i. And b i times minus b i is b square and minus and i square. Now, i square is minus 1, so it will be b square minus and minus 1, which means it's just b square which is equal to, obviously, reducing these two things, a squared plus b squared. Okay, so that's the standard way of um, converging this particular thing into more traditional format. So I will multiply both numerator and denominator by, four, by 3 minus 4i. So what will I have in the denominator, a is 3, b is 4, so I will have 3 square plus 4 square, which is 9 plus 16, which is 25. So this is equal to, and I will have 25 in the denominator. Now, here I'll just multiply. Minus 4 times 3 is minus 12, plus 3i times 3 is 9i. Minus 4 and minus 4i is plus 16i. And 3i minus 4i is 3 times 4 minus 12. i, I squared is minus, so it's plus 12, which is equal to... You see how easy it is? So it's 25i times 25, divided by 25, which is i. So that relatively complex um, 
uh, expression actually equates to pi. Well, considering we did certain number of uh, relatively complex uh, transformations, um, even if all the uh, transformations were invariant, I think it's a good practice to do the checking. So let's try to put pi into the beginning in the, in, in the original equation and see if that actually is a solution. Well, checking is always a good thing, you know. Sometimes it's mandatory, you know that, from the lecture. Sometimes it's just a, a, a good practice to do. Well, it's always a good practice to do, but sometimes it is mandatory. All right, so x is equal to i. So what, what do we have? We have 3 i, 4 i, and i. i squared is minus 1, so it's minus 4, plus 4, minus 3 i. And this reduced, and this reduced, it is indeed equal to 0. So we were right uh, with our solution, x is equal to i. All right, so that's second sub-problem, mini-problem. The third one, 5 minus 10x equals to 0, and I'm asking to solve it graphically. Now, um, as you remember, we have to graph the function 5 minus 10x, which is... Okay, um, let's start right in, in, from the very beginning. y is equal to x. Step number one is this. y is equal to 10x. This is 10 times steeper. So it will be like this. But also crossing the zero. And now, uh, y is equal to minus 10x. Well, this is a symmetrical, so it goes this way. Instead of steepness that way, it will be steepness down, if you wish. Uh, and plus 5. That means the whole graph will go up 5 units. So instead of crossing in 5, <coughs> In 0, I will cross in 5. So, let me just get rid of all this. And the resulting graph will be x, y, 0, 5. So, it will be here. Now, as I said, the steepness is characterized by this number 10, which means this segment is 10 times greater than this segment. So if this is 5, this is 1 half. This is 1. So the scale is not actually the same, just to make sure that you know you have a, 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 a good grasp on the picture qualities rather than particular dimensions. So here, five units will be something like this. And here, so the, the scale is different. This is one unit on the x, and this is one unit on the, on the y. Slightly different, but that's okay. In any case, we have the crossing of this graph with y equals to zero, which is the x-axis, at x is equal to one half. Well, that's the graphical solution. Let's check it out. Put one half uh, instead of x, it will be definitely 10, 10 times 1 half is 5, 5 minus 5 is 0, everything is fine, so that's the graphical solution. Well, most important here is what? To draw a line and exactly know what's the ratios between these two segments, where it crosses the uh, y-axis and where it crosses the x-axis. And that ratio is characterized by this number 10 in this particular case. And then the crossing of the y axis is characterized by this. Three member, five in this particular case. And everything else basically follows from this ratio. All right, so much for this mini problem. And 
we have the last one, which I planned for this particular set of problems for linear equations, I was thinking that, look, linear equations are really so simple. What can be really challenging um, as, 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 as a nice problem? Well, I didn't really come up with anything real challenging. But anyway, the last one seems to be a little bit unorthodox. I have 2x plus 4 times 2x minus 6 equals to 0. Well, you obviously can tell me, hey, this is not a linear equation, so why are we talking about this? You're right, it's not a linear equation. However, the fact that this is the multiplication of two expressions, each of them are linear, actually makes it two linear equations at the same time. Because, um, think about it this way, uh, if something which is a product of two different expressions is equal to zero, when the product of two numbers is equal to zero, well, obviously, either one is equal to zero or another equal to zero. And both cases are uh, uh, e e equally right. If none of them is equal to zero, then the product is also not equal to zero. So, the re so if we are looking for solutions, what are the values of A and B, we should really look among A equals to zero or B equals to zero, and both have the same rights. In this particular case, what makes this expression, which is the product of two linear expressions, equal to zero? Well, either this particular component or this particular component is equal to zero, which means we have really two linear equations. One linear equation is 2x plus 4 equals to zero, and the solution is x is equal to minus 2. And another is 2x minus 6 is equal to 0, and solution x equals to 3. So what I can say is that this actual quadratic equation um, can really be uh, broken down, if you wish, into two linear equations, and each of them has the corresponding solution, which means that both of these uh, numbers, minus 2 and 3, represent solution to the original equation. It's just the way how we get to these two solutions is by solving two linear equations. And this is actually a very good, in, a, a very good point, because in theory, and then jumping forward really <coughs> significantly in this particular case, any equation of the power of n equals to zero. Now this is a general equation with different coefficients, different multipliers, and x to the nth degree, n to the x to the n minus first, etc. So all the different uh, powers of x are represented with different um, uh, multipliers, and the total sum together is equal to zero. This is a general equation of the nth degree. Or, or nth power. So there is a very important mathematical theorem that any expression of this type can be really transformed into expression of this type when you have a bunch of linear expressions and not just a bunch, exactly n linear expressions and the result of the multiplication is the same as this uh, polynomial expression. And therefore, solving any equation of the nth degree is basically equivalent to uh, transforming it into this form when it's actually a multiplication of different linear expressions, and then solving each linear expression, which is really very simple. The only little uh, detail about this is that it's true among the complex numbers. And this is one of the very, very interesting examples of how something quite artificial 
like complex numbers um, come handy because this particular uh, transformation of any polynom into a bunch of into a product of linear expressions it's true only within the domain of complex numbers so we will talk about this a little later but right now I just wanted to make a very quick glimpse into something which if you remember in the beginning we had a couple of lectures about beauty, harmony, etc. This is a perfect example of uh, a, a harmonious uh, approach to uh, equations when the equation of any uh, power can be expressed as the corresponding number of linear equations multiplied by, 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 by each other, linear expressions rather. Okay, so that basically completes um, these uh, many problems for uh, linear equations, very simple indeed, but nevertheless important. Thank you very much.